Hi everyone, this is Kelly and I am here just to do a quick comparison of the first, oops, actually, <laughs> the first and second edition of the Naked Heart Tarot. Uh, the second edition was sent to me uh, to do as a comparison uh, with this by the lovely Jillian who I just think is amazing. Um, I have a walkthrough of this already and I will put a link to that down below. Um, I'm really just going to show you the differences here. Now just as an update because I've had this deck for a while now uh, as to how I find it, I find this to be a really Really beautiful deck. Um, it's I would set this. There are two decks that I would really say this about, um, and that would be the. Um, I can't mix these up because these are the deck cards that have changed. Um, it's really clean. It's to me, it's got a similar energy to the Fountain Tarot, even though they are artistically nothing alike. That's completely different art style, um, but there is a similar uh, energy to them, and that they are. It's. I think you can even just see it with the white space that creates this beautiful cleanness to the readings that doesn't seem to bring any sort of weighted energy to it itself it's just nice and clean and beautiful and it works really well uh, in readings I've used this for quite a few readings and I just I really do put it on the shelf with the fountain tarot as something to go to that is just Let's get down and get to, let's get in and do the work uh, without any uh, underlying energies being pulled in. And what I mean by that is, say if we take a deck such as the Marielle, which you know is a, a favorite of mine, right? That is a deep, powerful, resounding, uh, energetically powerful vibra vibration deck. So if I bring that deck to uh, a reading it inherently puts a weight on to the reading itself that may or may not be part of the the reading. So like I would not pull the Marielle out to do a reading about, you know, work necessarily. Um, and even in a relationship reading, I would be a little hesitant only because it lends this weightiness into where maybe the situation isn't as weighty. I pull it out for spiritual matters, for really honing in, for checking in um, on greater path journeys. So there's different reasons I pick different decks. But there are some decks that are just, not a lot of them, that are really good as just a good all-round deck to have because it's clean. It lets us just read the situation and it doesn't bring any vibrations in uh, to the picture. I mean, it's good vibrations. I hope I'm explaining this well. Uh, three, I would say three decks that immediately come to mind are the Fountain Tarot, uh, the Naked Heart, even, although this is busier, but even the Japardia Tarot has that feeling of let's just get in and do the work. Um, in a powerful way, but definitely the Fountain Terror and the Naked Heart have that, and it's something I really value um, having in my collection of decks to pull from. So that's how I have found uh, this to be, just in terms of working with it. Now, let's get into what this deck, obviously what this purpose of this video is, is a comparison. You can see that the boxes look to be the exact same on the front. Uh, if you turn them to the side, however, you can see that this the first edition is much thicker than the second edition, and that is to do with the guidebook. The cardstock, as far as I can tell, is the exact same cardstock. We have the same elements on one side. We have the same Naked Heart Tarot by Jillian C. Wild on the other side, blank at the bottom, blank at the top. So the box is identical uh, besides that, except on the back, you'll see on the second edition, the back is placed, the image on the back of the cards is placed in the middle. So it is missing, uh, let's see, the top three are the same. Uh, these two are the these two are the same, so it's taken out. No, that's down here. Uh, so this and this, so it is missing this uh, card here. Um, so there's just one less, and there's an extra um, UPC code. 
So pretty much the boxes are fairly identical. Uh, they feel constructed just as well. Beautiful construction to them. They have the nice tabs to open them in. It's just that it is narrower uh, because of the guidebook. So when we pull out the guidebook, let's look on the inside though. They are the same on the inside. The Naked Heart Holds the Secret of the Soul, Jillian C. Wilde. Uh, but you'll instantly see that the guidebook is much thicker in the first edition than in the second edition. The paper also is, uh, the feel of this, it's hard to tell because one's so much thinner. Um, I will say that it, it was a, this is a chunky guidebook. Um, and it, some of the pages have gotten a little bit loose there. And I really don't use my guidebook too much. In the, so this isn't from overuse. Um, but I think it was just a little too chunky for this size of a this size of a guidebook. It was great. I think it was enthusiastic, but I do think it was a little bit much to read this in this small of a format. It would have had to have been a bigger book and so size-wise. And so this feels like different paper. It's a thinner, it's really, this feels fantastic. Um, and it's definitely though giving you less. You do get oh, a couple different, um, and I think they were the same spreads that were in the other one. Um, but you are getting less information here. So if, let's take the Fool. There we go. There's a lot of information about crystals and crystal grids and things of that nature. And I think a lot of that has been pared down. So it's, just, it's really hard to work with this guidebook, I will say. So now we don't have an image in all this white space. We just have a teensy tiny. That to me is pretty much useless. It probably would have, I mean, it does key you in on it. So I don't want to say that it's useless. It does key you in on the card. So it's not useless, but that is very, very tiny. Um, that's small already. It's a nice size, but then you have all this white space around it. So I understand why, uh, but that could, I think could have maybe been a bit bigger to be as helpful. Um, you have keywords here. You have uh, a message. You still do have the crystal uh, recommendation, the element there, and the whisper from the familiar animal, which I really like. And then you do have a reversed meaning. Whereas here, you just do get a little bit of extra text. You do get a section on the uh, symbolic keys, so the circling planets, the unicorn, the path, what all of the different aspects of the card is showing us, um, as well as more of a graphed out or table of the gemstone and the um, element. Um, and then the reflection that's there. And so I think that they've just condensed things down. You also don't have keywords uh, section here for both um, and just kind of reduce the information there. And I can understand that. I think that in terms of a little guidebook like this in a deck, having the cards be a page of pertinent information is really probably the this is how these should be done. So I do think that was a smart change. I think the only other option would have been to make this bigger and separate from the box, um, which, you know, because this is, there's a lot of information here, obviously, although some of it is kind of taken up with the larger image. So I'm not sure exactly how much information is being shifted, but I do think this was a smart move um, just in terms of usability. Um, it just feels much easier to, to grab the pertinent information that you need out of this. This is this is unwieldy because of the size and the thickness. So that's the major change into why that the box would be smaller. Now the card stock as far as I can tell uh, I don't want to mix things up here, is the same. And if I, I even stack them next to each other and they appear to be the same. I'm going to just pull out these cards here. Oops. Oh dear, what did I do? Maybe I'm wrong. Okay. Yeah, let me pull these out. Yes, yeah, so these 
here we go. I'm not sure why that Six of Cups is there. I obviously did something wrong. Um, the cards, as far as I can tell, uh, are the same. It's beautiful cardstock. It's matte. It's silky. Um, it seems to me to be the same as, as just as beautiful as the first addition to the cardstock. So that, um, I kind of set them up next to each other. As far as I can tell, and I am not an expert on cardstock, that seems to be the case. So what I'm going to pull out here are just the cards that have been changed in some way. So to the left is the first edition and to the right is the second edition. I'm going to zoom in here. Here uh, the differences are the additions of some roses. Uh, we can. That's the only shift there is the addition of some red roses. This five of wands, you can see this dark uh, center here that kind of gives depth to the fire, which I actually think looks really well. Again, I have nothing against this one, uh, but I do think that addition does give it some dynamic energy to it. So one of the big changes in this deck uh, were, is the changes of the court cards. So in the first edition, they were child, youth, mother and father and they've been changed to a more I don't want to say generic because that's not what I mean but sort of a more specific to the energy that that represents that so we're kind of stepping away from the metaphor into what we're saying so child when we say child we think of innocence and so instead it's just innocence uh, when we talk about youth or the knights, we are talking about movement. And so we simply have movement of wands or movement of fire. I would have really liked to have maybe even seen it step into the element, but you know, we've got the element right there. Um, then we have the heart uh, for the mother instead of the mother. And then we have the spirit. Uh, of wands instead of the father. Um, so I like that. I mean, I like mother, father, daughter, son, because those things convey similar things. Although spirit, I think, is a bit of a, uh, is the one that I think differentiates a little bit than father, because father can have the structure element of the emperor. And I don't think of spirit as being as structured as, say, the emperor. Um, but if you know what you're looking at, like you can, this doesn't change how you might read it, but I do think it's in alignment with the deck itself. Um, so I actually quite like that. I mean, obviously father, son, daughter, and mother, uh, are different than a tarot deck already. So they've already made the leap of changing from, you know, page and knight and queen and king. Although obviously there are older decks, um, that will also use son and daughter in there, or prince and princess. So there are diff there's always been differentiations there. Um, but I like this. I think, whoops, I turned too many over. Um, I, it doesn't bother me. I also do really like the traditional, and I do like the fam familial, especially with the animals, animal groupings. I think it works really well. But um, I quite like that change. Some people will, some people won't, right? The Ace of Swords has quite a change here. I love this new Ace of Swords. I love the black swan here. Um, I mean, this is great, and I think it functions, but that is a gorgeous card. Of course, I'm a fan of the swords. This was an interesting one because they've just sort of a added a crow or a raven here on the top of the Three of Swords. I like crows and ravens. It brings animals, you know, because it is a deck with a lot of uh, animal imagery, especially in the minors, and so it kind of adds that into one that didn't have it at all. It doesn't, for me, really change anything about how it's read. I brought this one out just to point out, nothing has changed here, but I did want to, and I don't know that this is going to show up in the video, to be honest, but there is a 
darkening of the blacks in this deck or a purity of the blacks in the second edition that you don't see here. There's a, a blue tone to the blacks in this deck, whereas this is far more black than blue. Um, and that shows up in any of the darks, uh, really. But you can really see it in person. You can really visually see it with this. I don't know if that's going to show up or not. But I did want to mention that. And this is another example. There is a blacker uh, look. And it's not just that they've deepened the tone. They've pulled out some of the blue tones, it looks like to me. Um, and so it looks like a, you know, it looks like a richer black. I quite like the, the change there. I think I just put these in because it was good to see them. You, for me, it, in, again, visually, you can really see the difference here. Um, and they're both, I don't have an issue with either one of them, but I do prefer that clean black look uh, there. And then here's the Heart of Swords. And then the Father, again, just all, and this is in more than just these deck, these cards, but it did show up very well there. Um, this one was an interesting change. He's just kind of sitting on his tail here. Uh, where now his tail's kind of showing up here and he's holding. So we, we don't have things stacked as high. We now have two that are down here in the stack over here. So I don't know if it was just to bring a little bit of balance to the visual, um, visual nature of it or what. You can also see little teeth where you don't see it here. So definitely tweaked that image. And then I think I don't I think I just had pulled this card for something. I don't know why I have this here because I don't think anything has changed. Okay, I don't want to mix these up. This is the old edition. I, mean, I think these are still in order. Let me pull just to make sure that I'm not thinking. I think I just pulled this for something else. Yeah, these don't look any different. I think what I was going to go for is, again, with the blue tones, you can see where, again, in person, you can visually quickly see there is much more blue tone where there is less, there is more gray and black tone here. So where I think some of the black was coming off blue toned, um, they uh, that there has been a shift there uh, in the coloration and it look in my opinion it looks really good again I don't have anything against it it wouldn't make me buy the deck you know just for that shift but um, because I think it's beautiful either way but I do prefer the second edition uh, in that instance so there we have it there those I, I don't think I've missed any if I have somebody please uh, make sure to put it in the comments the major difference I would say is this the deck uh, guidebook has definitely reduced down and uh, obviously the changing of the um, court the titles of the court cards I would say would be the major um, shifts there but because I don't think really any of the changes in actual cards um, have anything that makes a, a big difference at all um, they're just little tweaks there but you know whereas the court you know changing the names of the courts um, definitely um, is a big shift uh, from the from the first edition so if you, you know, I guess the question is like, okay, if you have the first edition, should you buy the second edition? Probably not, to be honest. I mean, the images haven't changed that much. The quality was already really good in the first edition. Um, I, I don't have anything against father, mother, you know, the family courts. I think they work beautifully with the deck itself. Um, none of the image changes are any that are, are game changers. So for me, this isn't uh, an addition that you would have to get, right? If you, if you already purchased the first edition, and now you're like, oh gosh, now I got to get a second edition, which can be annoying when there's huge changes where you're like, I just, you know, I put money towards a first edition. Now you're making it so I'm almost feel like I'm punished because I bought the first edition and now I wish I would have gotten the second edition, right? It can be a little bit frustrating, I find, when there are multiple editions with big changes where you feel like, okay, you, know, you kind of feel like you have to keep buying, repeatedly buying a deck, um, which is I'm not a fan of. This doesn't feel like that. This, the integrity of the deck for me in the first edition is 
is just as strongly there as in the second edition. Um, and any of the tweaks or the changes of the images are, I think, aesthetic and they're not majorly going to change uh, the reading of the deck. So I quite, I appreciate that in Miss Jillian. Uh, I appreciate everything about her. I think she has got a, such a sweet spirit. She had so many troubles with this deck and I think she really showed how to navigate that in a graceful and beautiful way. And I feel like the second edition um, is it just keeps reiterating that. So yes, there are changes. Yes, um, it's you know there's something fresh there in the second edition to make it not just a reprint but a second edition. But it's nothing that makes it feel like you have now said this is not you know now all of a sudden this is less than and this is more i don't feel that here i think that if you don't have this one this is a great way to get the deck with well, yes there's some changes um but it's you know i i'm beating a, you know i'm saying the same thing over and over again but my point is if you don't have the first edition this is a great um, follow up. If you do, don't feel like you have to go out. Unless you're a collector. Obviously there are collectors who like to have all the editions because of the collecting nature. Um, and that obviously that's fine. But if um, if it's just because you're feeling like, oh shoot, do I have to shell out more just because it's now so much better? I, I wouldn't worry about it. I really do think that the energy is the similar. It's just such a clean and beautiful deck um, like I said uh, it works for me on so many different levels of just getting in there doing the job saying what it has to say there's no uh, people that are involved but I think that the animals work really well with what they're doing um, I don't know I just like it um, this is one I had really debated on purchasing, and it was mostly because of the Fool card, um, and maybe even the Six of Cups a little bit, because it felt a little bit childish with the uh, art style of the Unicorn on the Fool card, and then the Six of Cups, not so much, because that you kind of expect that. But, and I'm just not a huge fan of unicorns, to be honest. Um, so I was really back and forth about it, but I ended up purchasing it anyways. Now, then there were problems and my order got canceled and she ended up sending it to me for review, but I had purchased it um, at one point and um, I'm, I'm so glad uh, that she persevered through all of the difficulties and put this deck out there because I actually really appreciate it as a reader and it is a deck that is in my favorites cubicle um, and as I said it sits next to in terms of my idea of um, a really clean um, clear deck that is I think great to just get down and work with and do do what it's got to do uh, without um, trying to upstart or over you know be more than the question or I don't know how to explain it I hope I'm explaining it very well I feel the same about the, the fountain tarot that I think sometimes decks can be so amazing and so powerful that in the course of a particular type of reading the, the energy and the power of the deck itself seems to make the situation play second fiddle um, and or shifts the energy of the of the reading and sometimes that's something we can use to our advantage so for example doing deep spiritual questions using the Marielle is like the perfect blending of those things it puts us in that mode puts us in our mindset there right but at the same time if it's a situation where there's a lot of emotions like relationships that are struggling and there's a lot of emotions at play here I don't really want to bring anything that's going to bring weight or it's going to be um, bring any other energy to the table I just want to have clean cool um, energy to kind of diffuse all of the emotions that are there and that's where things like the fountain terror this deck again i also like the jeopardia for that even though that's a busier deck um, those are the three even the pagan other worlds for a pip deck i feel like the pig and all picked almost all pip decks in my opinion also function that way but we're kind of talking about non-pip decks that can function in that that real clean neutral energy and that's where i for me that's where this 
really shines. So there you go. I hope this helps if you are looking at these, if you already have the deck and you were struggling whether you needed the other one and so on and so forth. I hope this helps uh, to sort of sort that out for you.